Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we'll continue in network security. Let me, let me just control the lights a little bit. Okay. All right. So uh, today's lecture is the accumulation without, without going over what we have gone through in this course. It's impossible for anyone to be able to understand what we're going to cover today. All right. As I told you, you know, uh, you have learned um, a lot of uh, conceptual and um, fundamental knowledge in this course. Now, any further topic will be kind of easy for you, all right? Because, you know, you understand. So, for example, well, now, if, uh, if we talk about public cryptography, you will know. We'll talk about the private cryptography, you know. We'll talk about uh, hash functions, you understand. When we say SHA-1, SHA-512, you understand. When we, saw, when we talk about digital signature, you understand, right? Uh, uh, message integrity, you understand. Um, 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 authentication, authorization, all of the concepts you have, all right? So now we're going to come to the security in the three levels we promise you uh, about. You know that we, in the, in the iPhone or iReference model, how many levels we have in the higher first model? Anybody can remind me? Seven. So start with physical, data link layer, network, transport, and application, right? Okay. Which is like the three layers of it, right? All right, so security is applied, apply, start, start applied in here, all right, in the application level. And while the data goes, it will be applied again in the transport layer. And while it's going down, it will be applied again in, <coughs> then it could be applied, and then it was certain security will be applied <coughs> in the network layer. And also in the data link layer somehow, right? Okay, so it will be security all over. So we'll start today, give you an example for application. Application. The book in here mentioned two, two for the mail, for the mail security. What example for the mail is like, you know, PGP, pretty good privacy, and S, mine. So when you send an email, everything will be encrypted. All right, there's two techniques. That's an application, it's examples for application security. There is many others, all right? Myself, I'm going to go over the PGB. This is for you for reading if you're interested. Okay, we're just going to give an example. That's what we're going to talk about today. Next week, we're going to talk about the security in transport layer. I'm sure you heard about SSL, okay, TSL, right? Right? So that's, that happens in the transport layer. When you go on here in the network layer, we have the IP SIC. Okay, right, IP security. In here, symbol is just for message integrity, like you have CRC and all of that. So security is applied for all or for different reasons. So let's take this example today. We'll talk about that pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, privacy. Deal? All right, so security at the application layer. So exa two examples, the PGB and uh, MIND. Let's talk about the first one. Um, so we'll discuss about the email. So usually, in, 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 in you know email, uh, you know uh, you need to secure you secure what the message, all right, and secure what the attachments. So there is attachments, right? Anything will be will be uh, 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 communicated. So the, we're gonna take a look at the email architecture and then the email uh, security. So this is the general architecture for the mail uh, <coughs> servers, right? So what you have? You have, for example, Alice. Alice would like to send to Bob. Usually Alice is a part of something called mail server, and Bob, the recipient or the sender also, is a part of the mail uh, server, right? So basically Alice will, will send a message to um, um, uh, 
it has a client, like all of you in your computer, you have a client. You are connected to a server, let's say UB server. And that's what is UB server. It has like two units. It has a message transfer agent. And it has, the uh, and in here it has message access agent. Okay? So the, the, the message transfer agent will queue it to the message transmitter or transfer agent. Right? Transfer. So many people or one person sending a, 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 an email, okay, or emails, it will go to the server. The server has two units and the buffer. <coughs> the message transmit server and the message transmit um, uh, 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 transmitter access, right? So this is a server, that's a client. Your Outlook Explorer is a client. You are connected to a server. The server will receive your message. The mail, the, the way mail work, there is no session. You don't create a session. There is no session. So the email could be sent when it's ready and received and could be fetched by the client and recipient at his own time. Could be today, could be now, could be after one month, after a year, or never, right? So it's not a session, it's not like chat. We're not trying to create a session where the communication happens right now, right? So we have a client server application, we have a client server application, and we have a client server application in here. So when the message is transmitted by the mail server, this mail server, over the internet, it will be received by another mail server, and uh, it will be put in the mailbox of the, of the recipient. And the recipient will get the message whenever he wants, when he wants, okay? So that's the, uh, the, the thing. So it's a simple mail, right? It's a very simple. So in email security, the sender of the message needs to include the name <coughs> or identifiers <coughs> of the algorithms used uh, used in the message. All right. So, so far we just spoke about like a plain text message. We did not talk about encryption or decryption or whatever in there. Okay. Um, so, when we if we need to encrypt as a principle, encrypt like data, like a mail or files. We use public cryptography or private cryptography? Depends what public files are. Huh? Depends what public files are. Public, why? It's just how you read it. It's like a shared. Hmm? Shared. Hmm? Remember what when we spoke about the public cryptography, what's the major problem it has? Sorry. Slow. Slow, right? So, so, so usually, like, if you need to encrypt your hard disk drive, what do you use? Private. The key, right? So that means you're gonna use AES or this or triple this, not RSA, right? Same thing. You could use public. You could use public cryptography, and public means what? There's two keys: public and private. But think about the amount of data that you need to encrypt. It's too much. It could be very slow. So definitely, 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 usually what we use, private cryptography for your data and files. All right? The, what is the problem now? If you have sender and receiver, what's the problem? Sharing. Sharing the key, right? Sharing the key. So you have a sender and you have a receiver. Mail and say, okay? So they have to share a key. Okay, shared key, right? All right, and it's one time shared key. Remember that what we say is not a session. We need to create a session. So for each mail you send, you have one shared key. So what is the best way to share this shared key? I just private, private pr cryptography. So you use, for example, the, 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 the public key of the receiver, okay? And the receiver will use, let's say, one to private, right? Public and private. So we use both actually. We use the private cryptography, that means two keys. For what? To share the private keys. And then we use this private key to, to encrypt what? The data. Simple, simple term. We'll, we'll take more details. Much, much more complex than this, but that's a simple thing. So let's, let's recap. <coughs> so, so 
send the data, we have to encrypt it. How we encrypt it? Using private cryptography. Okay. For that, we need to have a shared key between the sender and the receiver. What we use? We use the public cryptography. Okay. Remember, private cryptography means how many keys? Mm -hmm. One. Public cryptography, how many keys we have? Two. Two, which is public and? Okay. Yes, I agree. You look at me, why you are using the public and the private, and it's so confusing. Yes, symmetric, asymmetric. How is that? Okay, symmetric encryption and asymmetric. Symmetric, how many keys we have? Mm -hmm. One asymmetric we're going to have? Two. Mm -hmm. So let's use symmetric, asymmetric to remove that confusion. Okay? All right. So moving forward, all right? So in the email security, the crypto, the, the encryption, decryption is done using symmetric key algorithm algorithm but the secret key to decrypt the message is encrypted using the public key of the receiver and sent with the message we send with the message all right so what the what the sender has to do okay let me draw it in the table in here the sender, the sender will take the message. This is the message, right? This is the message, right? Call it M, all right? You add to it what? Shared key. A shared key. It's called shared key, all right? You add to it a shared key, all right? And you have to send the shared key to where? So this will be encrypted with the shared key, encrypted with the shared key, encrypted with shared key for the message. All right. All right. And this also will be encrypted what? With what? With the public key of the receiver. So you use the public key of the receiver to encrypt it, you send it. Now the receiver will be able to read this. Yes, using its private key. Now we'll be able to read the shared key. The shared key will be used to what? To decrypt the message. Will be used to decrypt the message. All right. So a pretty good privacy BGP can be used to create a secure email message or message or to store a file a file securely for further uh, future uh, retrieval. So the simplest the, the simplest way of transmitting the data is using a plain text. Okay, so you have hours generating the data, sending it to the phone. No encryption, nothing. Okay, you could use, I mean, sometimes you are not interested on, in, 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 in the privacy of the data, but you are interested that the data will be correct. So you're interested in the integrity of the data. So you don't have to encrypt the data, but you, what you could do, you could, from the data, what you do, generate a digest. So you send the data with the digest. How you create the digest? Using the, the, the private key of the sender, okay? You create a digest, you send the data with the digest. It will be received by Bob. Bob now received the message. The message anybody can read it. It's not a secret, right? It's not encrypted. But Bob needs to make sure it's integral. No changes has happened to it. So it will be able to calcul calculate the digest from where? Using what? Using the public key of Alice. Yes. All right? So in here, only checked about or checked for the integrity of the message. So the first scenario, we have to, there's nothing done. The second scenario, we check for message integrity only. Okay? Example, if I send you an email, okay, there is no class next week. This message is not meant to be a private, I and mean, it's like a public message, right? But also, you need yourself to make sure it's integral. Nobody has changed it. Okay? Integrity of that message you agree then after that we have compressed message just to compress the message so there is no security issues in here 
So you have the data in here, okay? You compress it, you compress it, and you add the digest to it, and you send the compressed message with the digest. When it goes to the receiver, we'll do two things. The first thing, decompress the message. Number two, calculate what? The digest again, okay? And then compare it to that transmitted digest. How this transmitted digest will be read by N by opening it using the private the public key of the sender, the private key of the out. So you start in plain text, then message integrity, then message in integrity and compression for the performance because the messages could be big. Then here what we are trying to do, we're doing <coughs> confidentially with one time session key. And that's the ultimate. You have one time session key, one time key, and you gotta check for that. Uh, we have we gotta assure assure the confidentiality. So basically what will happen, take a look in here. So you're gonna create a block in here, as you see a block of data, which has the message compressed, so you compress the message. Alright? And for integrity, you're gonna add the digest, digest of the message. How digest is calculated? Using private key off of the sender. All right. So now we have it compressed, and we have it to check for the integrity. Now everything will be what? Everything will be. Encrypted using what? No, the shared session key. The shared session key. Alright? So the sender will generate a session key randomly. And we'll use it to encrypt the data. Right? Okay. Now, this is will be sent to where? To Bob. Bob, to be able to open the lock in here, has to have also what? The shared session key. So we have to send the Bob as well what? The shared session key. But if we send it as a plain text, that's a problem. What we have to do? Encrypt it. Using what? Using what? Shared. Receive his public key. With Bob's public key. So who is the only one could unlock the shared key? Bob. Bob. So Bob receives the message. Okay, it's exactly like you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is a box which has a gold. I have to give it to you, all right? So, and it's locked. So, if you need to use it, they have to give you the box which has the code, and they have to give you what the key. I have to give you the key. The problem if I send if, uh, if, I, if I give the key to him to give you the box with the key, what will do what, what will he do? Open it and take the gold. Okay, so we cannot trust him to get to to okay to give him the key. All right, to give him the key. So I have to 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 you know um, um, hide the key, give him the key to give it to you, but hidden somehow, hidden somehow. So you know we could put it in a bar of a candy. Yeah. Him, this is a bar of a candy. Okay, this is a candy. Okay, or a bottle of medicine. This is a medicine for your heart attack problem. Okay, <laughs> you open it to find the key. Whatever. Okay, you got the idea, right? So that's a very simple system. So you have the <coughs> message compressed. Before you compress it, what are you gonna do? You calculate the digest. Number one, you calculate the digest. How you do the digest? Using a. What's a? Is is uh, it's signed? With, uh, you create the digest. Okay, now for the digest is both sender and receiver, they have to agree in one, uh, um, in one, uh, what do you call it? Algorithm. Algorithm, which is a uh, hash function. One hash function. It could be SHA 512, MD5, MD2, SHA1. They agree in the system, right? All right? Actually, they don't. It will be part of the message transmitted. So when in the P PGP there is a header, part of the header, it will tell the receiver, I have used this algorithm. 
and the header is not encrypted. The header is not encrypted, all right? But anyways, the sender and the receiver have to know what algorithms are used, right? Then, it's very simple. It has to calculate the digest again for this message, all right? And then it has to compare. Now, the problem with this digest, okay, it has to be signed, signed. So we use the, pub, the, the, uh, 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 the uh, private key of Alice for what? For signature, digital signature. Let's go to the previous classes. When we need to assign a message, what we do? We use the pri private key of the sender, and the receiver use the public key of the sender to check it, right? So basically everything in, 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 in the slide here, if you did not go through the previous lectures, you will not, not understand anything, right? So digital, we have in here, digital signature. We have hash function. We have public encryption. We have private encryption, symmetric and symmetric. We have everything in this slide. All right, and you know you are flowing right now how all of these are used, right? So when it, when when I tell you when you tell me about when I tell you digest, what is digest? What are you gonna tell me? What are you gonna tell me? The digest, what it tells you? It's uh... myself. It tells me that I'm hungry. I need to go home. Get over today. About you, what does it tell you? What well, the digest tells me? Yeah. It's so going to decrypt it and it'll tell me well, what the message is, I suppose. It tells you what? The digest sort of verifies that the message is. Okay, how, what is the algorithm used to create the digest? Hash well, function. function. Yeah. Hash function, right? What kind of a hash function? It tells me the hash One way hash function. Mm -hmm. One way hash function. What is one way? I mean, review. Now we are doing review for what? 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 What is one way hash function? Goes one way. <laughs> huh? It goes one way. Yeah. So once you have the digest, you can you can you can go to that. Okay. Back and to there's the three characteristics for any good hash function. You remember what them? First image, second image, and the resistance for collision. Remember from the previous classes? Okay. Right. We had the whole lecture talking about uh, the hash functions, right? So what is the output of the hash function? What is the input for a hash function? The data. Big. Huge. All right? What we do with this data? We divide it into blocks. blocks. All right? Equal blocks. All right? And then we pass it to where? To the engine. Okay? We'll give you what? A digest. Digest is a variable size or fixed size? Fixed size. So if you're using SHA 512, what is the size of the 512, right? Okay. No matter what the input, the output will be digest. Okay. What is the idea of digest? What we use the hash function for? To verify the message integrity. That's it. Okay. So now we did a whole review for a whole chapter we covered before. Right? So, when you go in here, for example, compression. Did we cover compression? We did not, but I'll tell you what's compression. What is compression? Algorithms to compress the data. There's two, generally, there is two types of compression. Anybody knows? Lossy, 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 lossy and? Lossless. Lossless, right? And here what we use? Lossless. Lossless, of course, right? Okay, lossless. Okay, so compression, it will compress the data. Okay? And it has to be lossless. Why? Because we have to decompress it to be able to read the data, right? So compress it, okay? When we compress it, or we, before we compress it, we calculate the digest, right? Okay? Now, the digest, somebody could fake the digest also. Grab the data, put a fake digest, and do replay. So we have to make sure this digest coming from where? From the sender. Who is the sender? Alice. Alice. So what we have to do? Make Alice sign it. Okay, how Alice digitally sign anything? Using her private, private key. key. All right. How can you check any signature? By the sender's public key. So that means 
bar can, has to get the public key of the symbol. Alice, right? So this is what we call it asymmetric encryption. For the data itself, with the die just needs to be also to be encrypted mm -hmm. with symmetric key. So this key, the sender and the receiver must have have it. Who generates this key? The sender. How the sender generate this key? Randomly. Mm -hmm. Completely completely random number. Oh, okay. So if if let's say that that you know uh, let's say the the, the, the um, it's using uh, AES, all right? What should be the size of this key? 192, right? Is it 192, right? 128 or 192? There's three versions, right? Okay. If it's using DES, for example, what is the size? 64 bit, okay? Or 54 bit, but there's the part 64 bits, right? Okay, right? So it depends on the algorithm which the, the system will generate the number. That will generate what the, the key completely generated. How is generated in real life? Computer strokes. So each letter you type will generate 8 bits. Uh, each pause will generate 32 bits. So completely random. Nice system. Because the success of encryption is the privacy of the key. And you have to generate a completely random number. So it will be completely random keys generated using your stroke. All right? Now, for this session key, which is generated through the strokes, has to be shared with? The receiver. Oh, Bob the receiver. Can I see it as a plain text? No. no. I have to encrypt it. What do I use for encryption? A symmetric key. So we're going to use what? The public key of Bob. Send it. Who's the only one can can open it there? Bob. Bob. Using his private key. Simple. Very simple. Okay. So that's what, you know, that's it. All right. Um, so also what we have, we have code, code conversion. So another surface provided by BGB is a code conversion. BGB uses radius. Okay, 64. I'm sure you have used it before. Okay, so usually what is the, 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 the basic representation for any data? ASCII, right? What does ASCII? But because you know... the key values. What? For the key values. No, ASCII, any data, you, you represent it by ASCII, right? If it's, um, if it's English letters, ASCII. But what if it's like foreign language? You have to use Unicode, right? Unicode, right? Unicode. All right. So radius 64 is change, it changes the representation from ASCII to what we call it radius 64 in a certain format. In a certain format. If you're within the habitics, I'm not going to explain how. But it's not changing from a format to another format. Okay? And then BGP also allows segmentation of the uh, message. Okay? Now, this is very important in here. Okay? The key rings, the key rings. All right. All right. So now, if Bob and Alice communicating only together, okay, that's an easy problem, right? All right, because Bob needs to know the public key of, of Alice, and Alice needs to know the public key of Bob. <coughs> And these public keys need to be verified, they need to be signed, right? So if you have one person in your life, that's a very easy thing. You know why? All you have to do is call the person or meet him in a Starbucks, exchange the public keys, done, right? But in reality, how many people you communicate with every day? <coughs> like fa hundreds or thousands of people, right? So that means you're going to have, like, so many keys. And that's what we call the key rings, key rings. So when you take in, you take a look in here, okay, Alice, okay, Alice, it will have a public frame, okay. Let's say this is not Alice, this is Shakur, right? So I need to have a public key of you, of you, of you, of you, of all of you. I'm gonna put them where? Yeah. In a ring. So whenever I need to send you an email, I have to use your public. 
Great. Great. And they have to have my own public and private, private keys. keys. All right, public and private keys. All right. What happens that usually I don't have only two, one pair. I could have two pairs, three pairs, four pairs. Let's say that I have four emails, different emails. So I could use one pair for a certain communication, another pair for another communication, a third pair for the third communication, a fourth pair for the fourth communication. So I have to have <laughs> rings, okay? Ring for all the public, key, uh, public keys for people I'm communicating with and rings for my own keys, yes. which is the public and the private. So that's me, that will be him, that will be Bob. Anybody's Bob in here? No Bob? Bob the store? Okay, John, any John in here? No Johns? Okay, okay, and everybody will do that, okay? So everybody will have in his system two ranks. One for his own <coughs> keys and one for the public keys, right? So that's the whole issue, how to generate these keys. I mean, the success of this system, it, it needs you to have these keys, right? All right. Is the idea clear? Uh, clear? Okay. So when you look at the, the PGP algorithms, so there is many algorithms you could use, right? So th th this is a code for the algorithms. Um, uh, um, the public key algorithms are used for signing the digest or encrypting the message. This is the public keys. All right. So what are the, for example, if the ID one is RSA for encryption or RSA? What do you use RSA for? First of all, <coughs> RSA is it symmetric or asymmetric? Symmetric. Asymmetric. Two keys. So. The algorithm that has two keys, we use it for what? For two jobs. Encryption and signature. In our case in here in the mail, what we are signing? The public key. The public key. So if I need to share my public key, I have to sign it before I send it to somebody else. Right? And encryption, what I'm encrypting in here? The shared key. The shared key, right? All right. I could use RSA only for encryption. Three RSA for signing only. Al Jamal. What is Al Jamal? Is it symmetric or asymmetric? Asymmetric. Asymmetric. You did the homework, guys. Asymmetric. So what we use it for? Encryption. Okay. DSS is symmetric or asymmetric? Asymmetric too. Okay. Reserved for um, uh, elliptic curve is asymmetric. Reserved for uh, asymmetric, Al-Jamal for encryption and signature, and reserved for Diffie-Hellman. Diffie-Hellman is symmetric or asymmetric? Two keys, right? Is asymmetric. So all of these asymmetrics. And you could create, you could generate your private algorithms. These are public algorithms. Let's say, okay, so you, it's reserved for you 100, 200, 10. So these are the public key algorithms, all right? What we are trying to say in here, if the sender is using RSA, the receiver has to use RSA, right? Right? If the sender is speaking in English, the receiver has to speak English, Spanish, Spanish. RSA, RSA, Al-Jamal, Al-Jamal, all right? So they have to share this information as part of the email. When you send the email, the sender has to tell the receiver, I have used with them for encryption and signature. Use it. You agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, they have to share this. Okay. In here, this symmetric uh, algorithms. Also, we learned all of these. So, number one is no encryption. It's the first example we gave. No encryption. So, the day, do we need a shared key in here? We don't, yeah. because it's not encrypted. All right? Then number two, idea. Idea is what? A private key encryption, symmetric key. Triple this, we learned about. So idea we did not explain in the class. Triple this, did we explain it? Triple this. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. How about CAS 2028, did we explain it in the class? No. no. 
Okay, how about uh, bluefish? No. How about uh, the C4KS 128? No. How about the uh, SK? No. Okay. Uh, this single key. Okay, how about the uh, AES 128? Yes, it's a major one. Okay, how about AES 192? Yes. How about AES 256? Yes, we explain all of these. Let's refresh your memory. What's the difference when you des when we designed them in the number of rounds. rounds? Thank you so much. All right. And in here could be any other algorithms. Any other algorithms that you designed. Okay. So again, this symmetric key, the sender, when sending the email, has to tell the receiver, I used one of these. Use it. Okay, use it, right? So in here for hash, do we use hash algorithm? What do we use a hash, algor a hash algorithm for? Digest. To create the digest. Mm -hmm. What is the hash al algorithm? Is one way hash function, okay. right? We learned it in a whole chapter, right? Can you give me an example for hash functions? You can cheat, that's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do it anyways. <laughs> hmm? MD5. MD5, is it secure? You, you think I'll give you an easy question without a follow up with a tough question? Could be. <laughs> Could be, that's your best answer. How about you? Is it safe? You don't think so? Okay, why you don't think so? Because anybody knows why you, why he do, does not think so? This is the first one. Huh? This is the first one on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, the unencrypted one was first on the list also when, in the previous tables. No, this is for hash function because it was, there is there is there is like uh, announcements for breaking through, breaking breaking the MD5. So <coughs> five years ago it was very secure. Not anymore. Okay, so when you go for example MD2, is it safe? Of course not, if MD5 is not safe. So the whole group of the MDEs, we replace them with what? Which group? SHA. 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 Okay. SHA. SHA. Right, SHA. SHA. Now, Sha. Which, one, which one is the most one used? Which SHA is the most used nowadays? 512, um, right? That's what we explained, right? Even SHA1 and all that, it's not very secure anymore. Right? So these are all different techniques for hashing, right? Remember, part of the data that the sender sends to the receive has a digest. The digest was calculated using one of these functions. So the sender has to tell the receiver, I have used this hash algorithm. Use it. So the sender has to tell the receiver, I have used this symmetric algorithm. I have used this asymmetric algorithm. And I have used this hash function. Use it. Okay? Use it. So we'll see how. Okay? We'll, we'll see how. Many of you don't know that you, for your email client, whatever you use, like Outlook Express or whatever you use or Outlook, you could configure these things. Okay? You could configure these things, but we don't. We we'll go with the default. Right? We go with the default. You could always configure it. Anyways, in here, symmetric key algorithm. So, didn't we cover this already? All right. Then for compression. All right. So part of the data we will send what we do. We compress it. We could, not necessarily, right? So it could be uncompressed or using zip or using zlib or different, different, different kinds of encryption. All right, so now, um, uh, for, uh, now, for certificates, all right, sometimes you need to certify, what, what we need to certify? <coughs> which one, which, which, what is information is public, but we need to certify it before we use it. Key. The public key. The public key of the sender and the receiver, the R, Public, all right, but they could be faked. 
they can use. Could be fake, right? So if you if I if I have to use this public uh, key, what they have to do? I have to. Yeah, I have to make sure it's fine, right? So there's two ways of certification. There's one way we have learned in one of the previous classes, <coughs> which is kind of a standard for certification, which is X509. X509. What is X509? A third party, okay, a third party that all parties trust, certify the keys and you get it from the third party, right? We explained that before, okay, third party, 509. We don't like it, we could use it, we could use it, so, um, so, so basic, basically, what, what, I, what, let me explain it in a better way, okay? So in here, for the public keys in here, these keys for other people, right? Again, I put them in my key. By the way, I forgot my key, my key chain in the office. Okay? No, I cannot go home again. Okay? So, um, so, you know, I have this chain or this, this ring. I'm going to have the key for him, for you, for him, for him. All right? So I have to make sure it's like a valid key, a final valid public, right? So somebody has to sign it for me. Before I add it to my key chain or my key ring, it has to be signed. All right, one way is to get it from where? X509, before I plug it into my key, right? So that's one way, that's what we are talking about. How we make sure the keys in this ring, which are public keys, are valid, are correct. So they have to be signed first, they have to be signed first, right? Think about it like a document. How can I know if this is a valid document? So it has to be signed, right? So there's two ways for signature. The old way or the general way, which is the slow way. It's not always an everyday way, but we don't need it here, which is using the 5O, um, using the XO5. So um, certification depends on the hierarchical structure of the trust. X509, there is a single path from the fully trusted authority to and a certificate. So we learned that it's like, you know, there's a root and there is certificate authorities, first layer circuit authorities, second layer, and all of that. So it might be, you know, um, a longer process. We could have a certification using the PGB. So in PGB, there is no need to have certification authorities or certificate authorities. Anyone in the ring can sign a certificate for anyone. So we'll go back in here, okay? So I have very, I, I have this person, okay? Okay, this person. I had his public ring, and I put it in the in a public key, <coughs> and I put it in my ring, why? Because I called him, and he gave me the key over the phone, so I'm 100% sure this is an authentic, for example, key. All right, then I put it in my ring, all right? I have the second person gave me the, his public key on a piece of paper. Then I put it in the ring, I trust it 100%, all right? Now I have a third per person, I received his key, but I don't know him. But the first person knows him and signed it for me. So I would consider it one authentic. So what I'm trying to say in here, anyone you trust in here could sign any key for you and becomes authentic. You don't have to go to certificates 509 to be signed. Alright? So that's the whole <coughs> point. The whole point. Is it clear? Alright? So uh, in BGB there can be multiple paths uh, from fully to partially trusted authorities uh, to any subject. So then, then look in here for example. So in here format of a private key ring. Okay, this is the private key ring. In your private key what you'll have, for example, let's say that you have three emails. For each email you're going to have one, one what? One pair, one pair, right? 
because you work in pairs. Right? That's why you see the keys in here, pairs. All right. So myself, I have UP email. Let's say abuznade at gmail, uh, abuznade at bridgewood.edu. So I'll have one there. I have a Gmail, which is another abuznade at gmail.com. I have another pair for it. So I'll have user ID. I have a key ID. Usually the first, the key ID is the first 64 bit of the public key. And then I'll have the private key. But I don't store the private key plain text. I have to encrypt it. Okay, encrypt it. And then the timestamp was created. So basically, that's my private key link. All right? Usually, you know, all of us, how many pairs we have? One, two, three, at most four. Right? Okay? That's okay. It's not a big, a big table. Right? Then the bigger one is, uh, and here, this is an example for, for so let's say, it says in here, let's say this person has two emails, okay, which is alice at sum.com and alice at anitnet, whatever. So the user ID, the first email, the second email. The key ID, it will be the first 64 bits of the public key. You put it in here. Then you have the public key, and then here what you'll have? The private key encrypted, you save it encrypted, and this is the timestamp. Okay, so that's what you usually will have. When you look at the format of the public key, it's a little bit complex, a public key. So, of course, you're going to have the user ID. So, what's your name? Scott. Scott, right? So, I'll have user ID Scott at, bridge, at my .edu. The key ID will be the first 64 bits of ALF as public key. And he will have the public key. Then we have the producer trust. Who, 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 gave, who gave me the trust? Who produced this trust for him? It could be another person. All right? Or it could be by call. Let's see an example. And then here, the certificates. Okay? The certificate trust. And that's the most important, is the key legitimate or not? I have a key in here. Is it legitimate or not? And the time is 10. Is okay. So take a look in here. Just, just go through this quickly. Okay. So in here, for example, in your public key, this is Alice public key, right? So the first line will include what? Her public key. <coughs> Include herself, okay? <coughs> then Alice, the, the key ID, which is what? The first 64 bit of the public key. Then uh, the, uh, the produced trust, okay, full. So the trust could be full, F for full, P for partial, and N for none. All right? All right? It's a full certificate. There is no certificate. She trusts herself. She did not need to get a certificate to trust her public ID. Okay, and the key if 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 the produ if the producer is trusted, then the key is legitimate. The key is legitimate. Let's say now she gonna add a Bob. Add Bob. All right. So when you look in here, she gonna add Bob in here. Okay, Bob. So now Alice adds Bob to the table, Alice fully trusted, uh, Alice fully trusted Bob. She knows him personally. She knows him personally. But to obtain his public key, she asked Bob to send the public key by email. So Bob sent her the public key. She knows him. She trusts him. She called him, send me your public key by email, as well as with the fingerprint, all right? Alice then calls Bob to check the fingerprint and then adds it to, to the line in here. So it will, it will have the, the, the key ID, which is the first 64 bit of the public key. Public key was verified over the phone. Okay, so the producer is F, and of course, is it legitimate? Yes, F. Did they, did they use any certificate to get this to the first two accounts? I don't know. I don't know. Directly, right? All right.
So the, the value of the truss is full for pop because Alice fully trusts pop. All right? Then after that, you know, let's go to the third step in here. So now Alice is going to need Ted. How Ted was added. Okay, now Alice adds Ted to the table. Ted is fully trusted. However, for this particular user, Alice does not have to call Ted. Instead, Bob, so she knows Ted, but she did not call him. Bob knows Ted public key. She did not get the public key from Bob, from, from, from Ted himself. She get it from who? Bob, who she also trusts very much. So what will happen, okay, the certificate is going to come from where? From Bob. That's why we insert it Bob. So Bob will send the public key certified by him. Is this acceptable? accepted by Alice? Yes. Why? Because Alice fully trusts Bob. Okay? So full, then half full. So basically, you could get the public key down to the user, or it could be recommended to you. It could be recommended to you from two kinds of people. People you are fully trust. So if somebody recommends a public key from and he trusts you fully, then it will be a very trusted. To be trusted. Or it could be partial, or it could be none. Non -trust. So in here, if you look in here, that Alice has three accounts now. Bob, who she got it by phone or by email, our example. Ted. She did not get it by email or by call. She got it from where? From Bob. Bob. From Bob. Then now it has to add where? Anne. It has to add Anne. Okay? Anne was recommended to her by who? By Bob. But Bob does not fully trust Anne. Partially. Okay? Partially trust Anne. Okay? I think so. I don't know what's the scenario. There is scenarios, you have to read the scenario. So in here, the scenario, now Alice adds Anne to the list. Alice partially trusts Anne, but Bob, who is fully trusted, sends a certificate for Anne. Okay, so now Alice partially trusts Anne, and Bob sent also partially. So partially plus partially make it what? Four. You got it? Scenarios, you have to read it and, and you'll fill. And you know, I mean, I mean just go through the scenarios, fill in the table, you'll understand the algorithm. So basically, if you look at the hours, let's say this is the path, the, the, the path for hours. Okay? So how many people are fully trusted? So fully trusted entity. Bob, Ted, and Alice. How many people are partially trusted? Okay, it will be Anne and Mark and Bruce. And it trusted the rest. All right. So basically, you know, when you have your your public uh, rank, public rank, you could draw this this map. How about a question in the exam like that? I'll give you a table and draw the table for me like this. Will work? Yeah, it will work, right? Okay. So. That's what it is. So let me go back, okay? Even if you miss some of the parts, you only really do get it, okay? So in here, what we're trying to do, okay, we're working in a section called ranks. Any person has to have how many ranks? Two. Two, ra two ranks. The first rank is? In private. For you, which has pairs. Pairs. One pair or two pair or three pairs. Okay, let's say you have three emails, you're going to have three pairs. Right, and the other one has the public keys. All right, you are not naive that any any and you put any public key there. Okay, you have to have a certified public key. You have to make sure the public key Sign. is authentic. Simplest way, if you have thousand people, call them by by phone and get the public key. It does not happen like this. All right, or. At least you can have some of some of the public key that you trust. They will certify <coughs> others for you. Okay. So the, what we were talking about a procedure to build your ranks, to build your ranks, right? All right.
so basically that's what you need. I mean, that's what will happen. At the, at, this is the BGB, okay? All right, at, at uh, uh, extracting information at the sender side. So sender side will have how many rings? Two. Two. Private key and public. public key. Okay, tables, two tables. You're going to extract information. So the first thing, you're going to get the Alice's ID. From the Alice ID, you're going to get what? The Alice's key ID. Then you're going to get the private key. But we said the private key usually saved what? Encrypted. So you have to decrypt it, right? You have to decrypt it. Now you have the Alice's private key. Now in here, you have to generate the session key. How do you generate the session key? Randomized. Using randomized system, right? And now, you need to get information from the public. What are you going to get from the public? The public key of Bob. So you're going to get the Bob's key ID and Bob's public ID. So that's at the sender. At the sender. At the receiver, what are you going to do? Okay. So you're going to have Pop's public ID. Why do you need Pop's, Pop's public ID? To decrypt, to decrypt, decrypt the, the shared key. key. To decrypt the shared key. So you use it. Okay. Okay, decrypt the shared key. You get the, the shared key. And then you're going to get the encrypted shared key and then the else whatever the public key for the signature. Okay. So it's a whole system working together. If you are a bit confused, expect it, okay, because there's too, too, too much clutter of information. But when you read it step by step, you will be able to understand it. But definitely, without going through the, 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 the hassle we had through this semester explaining every one of these concepts, it will be impossible to understand anything in this chapter, okay, to understand what was going on. All right, so now, Okay, uh, we, the message it will be for it will be packets, right? So any packet, what does it have in top of it? Header, and then the body. Let's take a header and the body and then go home. Okay, so it will have a tab which is one byte and the length. What is the length? So, so when you look at the the, the, the tab which is one byte, okay, there is all. Uh, there is uh, it starts with one and there is old format and new format mostly is one for new format and the next 60 is uh, six bits two to power six give you 64 different packet types there are different packet types these are some of the common packet types okay you could send different packets okay number one session key packet encrypted using a public key so you could only send the session key and encrypted with what the session key? With private. with a public key of receiver. of the receiver. Okay. Then the second one, signature packet. Sometimes you need to send only a signature packet, or a private key packet, or the public key packet, or a compressed data packet. So data compressed, compressed or data packet encrypted with a secret key. Data packet encrypted with a secret key. Or literal data packet, your data, your message. Or user ID packet. There is different packages that you could send. Let's take example. Okay, the first one is a literal data packet. So as any packet, it starts with what? Yeah. With a header, tag. Then we have, we said like uh, uh, the body length, the mode. Okay, I'm not sure what the mode means. Let me refresh my Okay, the mode, okay, it tells you what kind of data. Is it binary or text? That's, so the mode, it tells you the data is, uh, okay. The length of the next field, what is the next field is in here? The file name. The file name could be long, short. So you have to tell what is the length of that file name. Then you have timestamp. And then what you're going to have in here, the message file, okay, or keys. And it will be, you know, depends. Remember that PGP is used for two things. What are the two things used? For the email and for saving the, the files in your system. Okay, sometimes it's not just only for sending, for, you know, or to include, include the files in your email. Okay, when you send it. So you could use it for that. So 
it's, it's in here the message message file or keys it could be a variable length so this is what we call it literal data packet all right in here what we have compressed back uh, compressed data packet i have a data i need to compress it only uh, when i to encrypt it i don't want to do anything so you have the tag you have the length then the compression method how many compression methods we have in here listed zip lz and other right so you have to in part of your header okay you're gonna tell everybody what algorithm used for compressing all right and then what you have the compressed data coming from from the packet will be compressed you're gonna put the type you used for compression here and the data gonna go in here so in here I'm sending a compressed file. Okay. Look in here encrypted data backend. So in here what I'm doing? I'm doing encryption. So basically you start with your data, you're gonna encrypt it. Okay, you do you can do encryption. The encryption happen, happens with what? With the shared key. With the shared key. Alright? And then it will be included in here and send it. And what type is this? We add number nine. If you go back in here, in here, data packet encrypted with a, a secret key. Right? In here, signature packet. <laughs> here is to send a, a, sign, a packet sign. Usually, the packet what will have in here. But we, what do we sign? The public key, right? In our system, the public key, right? You sign it. So basically, what you have in here, for example, message, file, whatever, okay? And how you sign it with a hash function. So you're going to pass the signature type in here, and okay, you hash it. You're going to have the digest. You encrypt the digest. You add it in here, that will be the signature. Then in here, this is different, that's fine. Then in here, what you have, session key packet session key packet so you have like the session key you need to send it to the other side okay you add some data with it and then you have to send it you include it in here in here you have the public key public key you can send the public key in here okay in here for user id packet okay so what will happen usually what will happen you will do uh encapsulation all right so Help me, anybody has a book, help me. So in here you have your literal data. Literal data, hello, let's go for lunch next week. I miss you so much. Let's go and do, you know, what we could work a little bit in that. So what is this? Tag 11. Can somebody check it for me? What's tag 11? What is the book? In the table. Nobody has a book? Okay. Sorry. Sorry I asked. 11, what is 11? Literal data. data, right? Okay, literal data, right? So, what I did in here, I put my message, the tag, and this is the literal data. All right, then I took everything, I put it inside, tag 8, what is tag 8? Is it encryption? What is eight? Compression. Compression. Okay, so what we did in here, took everything in here and we compressed it and we add a header. Now I have the data compressed inside tag nine. What is tag nine? The data encryption. 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 So everything now, so data compressed and, and encrypted. encrypted. And I'm going to send also encrypted using what? Session. Shared key. Session key, right? Which is shared key. I have to send also the session key to where? Separately. How I send it with tag one? What is tag one? Session. Session key. Session key. Session key packet. All right? So it's a very nice system, elegant, I think, that, you know, okay, very nice system, right?
So bear in your mind, we did not, we did not establish a session. This is not a, a session communication, all right? It's not forward and backward communication. Email does not work like that. Email, you, you, you create an email, you give it to your server, the server will send it to where, will queue it, and then send it out to the destination. The destination will receive it, put it in your mailbox. You don't have to be in the other line to check it, to check it tomorrow, after one week, right? So that's what it is. And also, we need, we need to have one session key. So every email communication happens with a session key or one-time key is called it. One-time key. How is the one-time key generated? Randomly. All right? But, you know, as again, the problem, we have to share this key that the receiver can read it. How we share it with asymmetric encryption. Okay? And asymmetric encryption includes what? Public keys. Okay, public keys could be fake news, could be inserted for you, could be like fake, right? So I have to make sure I use certified or authentic public key. So we came up with a nice system called what? Rings. Okay, rings. What I have in the rings, there's two types of rings. Public ring and my own pairs, my own pairs. My own pairs, no problem, I create them, I generate them, there's no problem, okay? And they are saved in my computer, all right? For the public, public keys, I have to make sure they are authentic. The simplest way for authenticity is, you know, give them directly from the person, by phone, by writing, but that does not happen all the time, all right? So, for, for digital certificates, we could use X509. But really in BGB, I don't need to do that. I made it simple that I could, if, any, if any, anybody I trust, and this person I trust, and he trusts another key, that's fine, it's valid. Let me use it, all right? So we created two rings, right? All right? And then after that, I have these tags. This is now how to generate the packets, okay? And I have the ledger. Now, any packet I send, it could be encrypted, it could be compressed, it could be hmm? the literal is your data, yeah. That could be all right. So that's what it is. It's a very nice, right? It's very nice, right? And of course, it's open. I mean, if you go, go when you go home, play with your whatever client, what do you use like um, Outlook, for example, or whatever. These parameters you could use. And by the way, you could use SMIM too. SMIM, I'm not going to explain it. Is another system, okay? But now, when you go as, as mine, will you be able to understand it? Yes. Because all the components, you have learned it already. You have learned it, all right? So this is, this is encryption or security at the application level, at the application level, right? So, so when you go back in here, the whole thing, okay? So when you, gener when you are generating your data, when you are generating your data, right in here, okay, in the application level, all right, I love, for example, I love bridge boards. Right. Even people took this uh, took a class with me in 1997, I always take this example, I love the bridge board. I love the bridge board since then. All right, so what will happen at the application level? We're going to add a header, all right? We're going to add a header, do you agree? We're going to add a header. And then when it goes to the transport layer in here, this one, okay, all of it going to go down. Okay, this is the application. And then this we're going to add a header at transport layer, do you agree? And all of this will go down, all right? Around in here, and then we'll add a header at header at the network layer, right? All right. So what we did, what we just did for this data, which is at the application layer, what we did? We encrypt. So the data, of our mail, it will be encrypted. Right.
So we incremented the application layer. We will go down. So at, at the transport layer, nobody will be able to read, will be able to read, you know, uh, the data in here, right? Except the header in here, right? The header of the application. So now we, at the transport layer, we continue to secure the transmission by encrypting what? Yes, and adding a header. This will go down. This is the header of transport. Okay. Now. When it goes to the lower in, in, the, in here, it will encrypt everything, okay, except the header for the network, all right? So basically, every layer we are eating a level of security. Of course, what I'm explaining here is very simplistic, okay, but that's what it is. So somebody would, might ask, why do I need to have, you know, it's already encrypted in the application layer. Why I need security? And it's a different kind of security. It's a different kind of security. We'll explain it more. So in here, for example, let's take a look in here, in the, in the transport layer, right? So in here, you're going to have SSL, like in, in, in like, like SSL and um, uh, TLS. But as, you know, we'll talk about it next week, but let's take a look at, at the network layer. All right. So as you know, and you know, let's say you have a sender and you have a receiver, right? All right? If we are in the part of the network, when we, there's no problem, right? But that's not the case. Think about this is like a bridge port in here. And this is, what is this? Yeah. Uh, two <laughs> So this LA. uh huh LA. LA. Right. LA. Oh, what's the state of this one? Okay. So usually like you know when data is sent there it has to go through a network of routers, right? There's so many routers it could go through. Here the the internet, right? Right? So basically, you know, this will be connected with this, for example, this one, this one, this, 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 and then this one. So what will happen in, at each router for the, the, remember that when we have a router we have in here, the, we have the header and the network layer. What will happen to the header and the network layer when it goes to here? IPs will change, right? Because from here to, I mean, from here there is IP source and IP destination. When it goes to here, the IP source will change because the source will coming in here, <coughs> right? And the IP destination <coughs> will remain, right? Until it goes, okay, until it goes to the end. So, you know, the, we cannot encrypt, we cannot fully encrypt or hide the data in the, in the header. Because everywhere you go, it has to read the map. What is the map here is the IP address and some other information, right? Okay. So, one technique is to do is, for security, is to cre create, a, 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 okay, the other thing also, okay, like your data could be divided into frames, different packets, right? So if you're using data frame, the first packet could go this route. The second packet could go different route, right? All right? And the security at each network could be different, right? Okay? Think about like a driving from here to LA, right? So people are driving in New York, people are crazy. Crazy, it's not secure to drive. But when you drive in Nebraska, okay? Every few hours we'll find a car and maybe, you know, okay, right? So the same thing with data. We'll go from one network to network. The security applied in each network is different. So what you could do, you could have IPsec, you could create a tunnel, kind of a tunnel, like this, tunnel of communication. That all the data 
is encrypted from beginning to the end okay and for the data in the header that we must have we move it out of the header we create a secondary header kind of okay and that's what is security in the network layer. we'll talk about it more creating the tunnels do we use it do you use it in real life yes how yeah, but like, like you, you know, if you need to have uh, a safe connection to your VPN, VPN, okay, VPN, okay, we use it, right? Anyways, so we are almost done in this course. We have just to take a look at the security at transport layer and at layer. Hopefully next week, and. Psh, we are, you know, what kind of done. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let's have